Well, last week was interesting. First, the ATF kicks us off their property and won't let us deliver your petitions. Gotta go. Then Hunter King, our head lobbyist and I, go down to the Senate Judiciary hearing on the gun violence epidemic, a public health crisis. If one of these young doctors sitting behind you is raped or sodomized, you don't think the rapist should be judged? I believe in forgiveness. Wow. We officially endorse Brennan Herrera, AKA the AK guy. Excuse me, sir. It appears you have cheated me in a game of poker. We get a helping hand from a Supreme Court justice, someone you may know. Is there anything on it? Uh, that letterhead that says, The Second Amendment is clear. Shall not be infringed means shall not be infringed. And the ATF gets smacked down again in court. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, Hunter King here, Director of Government Relations for the National Association for Gun Rights. We are here on Capitol Hill today, over on the Senate side. We're about to walk into the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing on gun control today. Now, if you didn't hear much about this Senate Judiciary hearing, there's a reason for that. You're not missing a whole lot. A lot of this is rehash stuff. Um, you know, Senator Durbin, who is very old and apparently only gets memos via Telegram, did not get the memo that the majority of the Democratic Party and the gun grabbers had sort of abandoned this uh, health crisis aspect of gun control, particularly because when they pulled it out in New Mexico, we came through and slammed them to pieces. But he still held it anyways, and it goes pretty much predictably as you would expect. There are a few pieces of note, um, like I said, Dick Durbin is old and white. Close the doors. This is off the record. What is it this old white guy ought to know about what's really happening in the streets of Chicago? Senator Hirono is also old and is struggling in a very Biden fashion to formulate thoughts. And how do we do that? One of the ways is to, I, I, I suppose, uh, lock up the violent criminals, although uh, I'm not so sure that that's what we're doing, that our, our prisons are populated, uh, have been populated for a do long time with maybe not, not violent, uh, nonviolent um, drug cases. More interesting, though, is the amount of time that Senator Cornyn of Texas and Senator Tillis of North Carolina spend defending their gun control package that they passed a couple of years ago, um, the one that no one asked for. The funniest part is that Every single gun grabber in the room before they start talking takes time to thank Senator Cornyn for passing this important legislation and be willing to be so brave and so bold. Last year, Congress passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. And I want to salute my colleague, Senator Cornyn, who is here with us today uh, representing the minority. It took real courage, John. Thank you, Senator Cornyn, and thank you again for your leadership with Senator Murphy on the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. I think that we will continue to build on the Bipartisan Safe for Communities Act, which we passed, and showed that we can defeat the gun lobby. Senator Tillis gets in a bit of a tizzy near the end of it, um, and I'll let you watch that. Uh, I supported the bipartisan effort uh, because I thought the policy was going to good, be good policy and age well. What I don't like are people that are making it harder to get people back to the table and get something done. And you don't get anything done on gun violence around here without bipartisan cooperation, which is why I was very frustrated with President Biden on the day that he signed the Safer Communities Act. One of the reasons I didn't go to that signing is I fully expected he was going to use it to spike the football and talk about more that he needs to get done that he knows damn well doesn't have bipartisan support. That is at the expense of where areas where we can work together. What I find interesting about that segment is Senator Tillis has been in politics a long time, right? You'd think that somebody who's been around long enough would know that, hey, if you give Democrats what they ask for, and it seems reasonable, um, there's a very good chance they're going to come back and continue to ask for more. That it seems to be the case every single time. It's almost as if they don't actually want reasonable solutions to things or even want just a little bit. They want everything, and they're playing the same game they've always had, which is incrementalism. So the fact that this grown man and sitting senator doesn't understand the base, the most basic political play of all time, I mean, you take that what you want. Now, I know people were kind of tired of me bashing on Senator Cornyn. Well, guess what? I'm not. And as long as he's still in the Senate, I'm going to keep bringing it up. So to the good people of Texas, please end my suffering. 
The rest of the hearing goes as follows. Inner cities have crime. The Republicans say, yeah, but that's a small group of people that you keep arresting and then keep releasing back on the streets. If you just kept them in prison, you probably wouldn't have this problem as much. And they go, eh, I, no, we don't want to do that. In other news, we also endorsed Brendan Herrera for Texas's 23rd district. Now, if you're not familiar with Brandon, go check his YouTube channel out. He goes by the AK guy. He's got millions of followers, and he is a staunch supporter and defender of the Second Amendment. You can see here him testifying against the ATF. First off, uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, Congressman Gates and Congresswoman Green, uh, for allowing me a platform to speak about the ATF. It is one of my favorite topics. And here he is shooting a belt-fed machine gun out of a helicopter with Kyle Rittenhouse and our President Dudley Brown. Now, Brandon is running against a Republican incumbent. Why? Well, that Republican incumbent is Tony Gonzalez. He is a Republican from Texas who voted for gun control. Man, that sounds familiar. A Republican from Texas that voted for gun control. Oh, like John Cornyn. Funny enough, it was actually John Cornyn's bill that he voted for. So, I'm already in on this. Now, if you're still on the fence, let me show you their campaign photos. Here's Tony. Right. Here's Brandon. You make the choice. Now, before I go further, leave a like, write a comment, subscribe. I see the analytics. More than half you guys that are watching this, you haven't subscribed. Why? It's just, just a click. Just click it. And you get updates on what we're doing, what your membership dues are going towards, how we're fighting in the courts, in the halls of Congress, everything that we're doing. Help us out. Now, last Thursday, so myself, Hunter King, and Dudley Brown were downtown meeting with congressmen, senators, and we go, you know what? This is a really good time for us to actually hand deliver the petitions that we had. Now, we have about 40,000 petitions to bring to the ATF, and we've done this a number of times. We go drop it off, they give us a receipt, we do a little bit of video and a picture, show you guys proof that we've dropped off your petitions, and talk about what the petitions are for, when the comment period is over, yada, yada. So here's how it started. All right, we're here out front of the ATF headquarters in Washington, D.C., and we're delivering tens of thousands of your petitions uh, to the ATF. Hunter, why don't you tell them what this is all about? Yeah, yeah, so here's what's going on. Uh, the Biden administration, Democrats in the House and the Senate, they know they can't pass universal background checks, so yet again, this is another attempt at them to circumvent Congress, circumvent the lawmaking process, and go through the rulemaking process, not legislatively, in order to implement universal background checks and universal gun, <laughs> gun registration. We're delivering these petitions right now on behalf of our membership, 40 or 50. You go across the street, but you can't be on the cross. You gotta go across the street. Oh man, that was a good take. I was like, <laughs> you gotta go. Well, we got run off, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we had to take that clip again because we got run off yeah, by yeah. federal security. Yeah. And, they, huh? and they kind of made up something right there saying that the we can't be on federal land. I'm like, we're always on federal land. We're, we're in the midst of standoff, right? Yeah, there's an interesting <laughs> standoff. So they don't want to hear from you, uh, is the simple fact yeah. is. Yeah. They really don't want to hear from you. They want an act gun control and registration of all private sales in America all kinds of gun control and ignore your input. Um, and that's what we're committed to do is giving your input. Now, Joe Biden wanted to do this executive action. He's wanted to do it for a long time. The Democrats have been pushing it. Um, frankly, even Republicans have done this kind of thing. And so our rule is we deliver your voice. You can't be here in Washington, D.C. We're here for you. We're going to bring your voice into this building and and tell them, yeah, these people don't want your brand of gun control. And so uh, as federal lobbyists, we think it's our job uh, um, to be the voice of reason on Second Amendment issues. Now I know what you're thinking. No big deal, all right? They tell us to get off their, their property, make us walk to the sidewalk. Yeah, not a big deal. But unfortunately, I put away my camera and my equipment. We were taking everything over to the loading dock, and then more security guards came over. And they started getting kind of aggressive for no reason.
taking pictures of our faces, making snide comments, taking pictures of license plates. At this point, we'd already told them our name, given our business cards, our phone number, email addresses, just so that we could be like, hey, you know, we've submitted this stuff. And some choice words were exchanged and they started getting a little aggressive and they started saying things, calling us names, things I can't say on YouTube, but you know, use your imagination, it's the ATF for crying out loud. And we go, you know what? I don't know what your deal is, right? We're gonna go take our stuff over to Loading Dock. We're sitting there, we're waiting, no one shows up. So I go back and talk to security and I say, what's the deal? They go, um, hold on a minute. So I wait another 20 minutes and then the head of security for ATF comes out. And he's nice, I guess, but he's also sort of getting a little nervous, but like, um, I'm being told I can't accept this. I go, why? I've done this a dozen times. He goes, they're just saying that you have to have like someone from the ATF besides us come in, receive it. Like, well, who, the, who the hell am I supposed to do that for? They go, call this office. So I go, okay, whatever. At this point, we're at we're sort of run over time, and I figure if I have to, I'll come back the next day. I call their office, I email them, I leave voicemail messages, I do this for days. No one has responded, and they will not take your petitions. So as of this video, you seeing this, unless you see otherwise, they still are refusing to take your petitions. So we're gonna figure something out, we'll talk to counsel, but that's where it stands at the moment. Now a word from our sponsor, who happens to be us. Do you like the idea of winning a very cool pew pew? I'll sign up for that. How about a super cool truck to drive it around in? I'll sign up for that as well. Well, then you're in luck. Because we're giving away this truck. So in other news, you may be familiar with our case involving force reset triggers with Rare Breed. Uh, if you're not, check out this video on it. Um, the court had given us a preliminary injunction. And what that means is that it was telling the ATF that they cannot go and harass our members during this time period. Now, they've hence broken that a couple times, but I think they've generally calmed down after we threatened them a few more times. And if you're interested in seeing that, you can check this video out too. Now, they've gone to the court a couple times already and asked them to get rid of that injunction. And the courts have said no. Well, they made a different case and came back and said, no, you should put a stay on this and get rid of this injunction. We've really got to harass these people. And the court took about, I think, five seconds and just said, no, <laughs> you're not doing it. We got that news immediately after being kicked off of ATF property. So not the end of the world, but it was still kind of fun. Now, in even more interesting news, we have a case against the state of Illinois and the city of Naperville who are trying to ban so-called assault weapons. Um, that case is going about as predictably as you could imagine inside the Seventh Circuit with liberal judges. We petitioned none other than Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett, who oversees that circuit. Now, three days after we petitioned, she picked it up. Now, if you want more information on the ins and outs of that case, what this means, the implications, whether or not you should get optimistic about this, check out this video that Hannah Hill did, who runs our foundation. She does an excellent job of breaking down everything. And that's the wrap up. So what was supposed to be a pretty mellow week ended up having some interesting fireworks. Now, if you like this sort of style of video where we go through the week or the past two weeks and we look at all the things that have happened, what NAGR has been doing, what the courts have been doing, then leave a like and say you wanna see more of this. I personally think it's helpful for the members and for people that aren't members yet to see what your dues, what your membership goes towards, right? So if you're interested, let us know.